Welcome to the cheese vault. There's <laughs> where there's two reasons why you don't milk water buffalo. Yeah. Okay. We're now experts in cheese. Cheese. It's cheese day. You're not a big fan of cheese. I am not a big fan. See here, my opinion of good cheese is like reading the menu from a restaurant based in a trailer park. But you're a bigger fan of cheese <laughs> than smoothies. Yeah, I am. Apparently. <laughs> uh, why are we doing cheese on the whiskey vault, Rex? Uh, because it's dry week. No one knows the quarterly challenge in our community in the whiskey tribe. Once a quarter, we are taking a break from drinking one week, and we explore other things, so we're a bit out of our element. So that's why if you uh, were watching the Whiskey Channel or you Googled or YouTubed whiskey and you found a cheese episode on the Whiskey Vault, yeah. it's not that we are having an identity crisis. No, us and the Whiskey Challengers are taking a week off, and today it's all about the cheeses. Okay, I know jack about cheese. What I know about cheese I learned from Jeffrey Eisenberg yeah. and my wife. And the guy behind the counter. And the guy behind the counter in Antonelli's. Now, so hold on a second. Daniel's so far up his own <laughs> This is how he described the guy behind the counter. He's he is like, the... He's like the Daniel Whittington of cheese. <laughs> so his, his word for expert is he's uh, the Daniel Whittington. No, no, it's a certain kind of expert. It's not all experts. Pretentious expert. No. Okay, sure. No, um... So here's the thing. This is Antonelli's. It's a famous cheese shop. Yes, I'm actually in Austin. Uh, 2010. Had... They're eight years old this year. Yeah, I think it's a husband and wife. Yeah, it's and... actually Kendall and John Antonelli. Yeah, I've met right? Kendall multiple times. She's very, very nice. Now, just to give them a little shout out because this was cool, mm -hmm. and uh, it's hard. You know, you can't just get this kind of thing anywhere. Two years after they uh, announced that John announced on our honeymoon that he wanted to quit his job oh. and do something cheese related. How would you like to do that? So, you wake up one day and your spouse says, I want to do cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so they uh, they said, why run, Why a cheese shop? They say, well, we went to cheese boot camps and joined cheese clubs and they toured Europe eating cheese and did all this stuff and then finally decided over a bottle of wine that, hey, maybe if we open our own cheese shop, we won't have to keep paying other people for their cheese <laughs> and we can we can eat cheese all we want. Let's get on that and, cheese racket. And get other people excited about cheese. So you've had kids before. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Totally! Yeah. I yes! <laughs> oh, okay. So this was my favorite one of the lineup until Rex just pointed something out. This smells like a diaper genie, it does. genie. not a diaper. It, it smells like the diaper genie. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you open up the lid on you the diaper receptacle punched in the face. to put in a new diaper. Punched in the face by that smell. God, you ruined it for me. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. I already am not a huge cheese guy. Okay, oh. so there are two, three, four, five, six, seven major styles of cheese. And I know because I just counted them on this picture that I printed so, up. So, like in whiskey, you got you know the rye, the bourbon, the scotch, Irish. They're in cheese. There's seven main categories. Many categories, but they have less to do with source and more to do with processing. Okay. Right. So now you can do cheese, cow, uh, buffalo, anything that you can milk, cats, goat. You can milk a cat. You can milk anything with nipples. <laughs> anything with nipples. Did you see that movie? <laughs> That's what I was saying, a cat. Just a little, just a little milk it. Uh, now you just need enough milk production that you can actually create cheese from it, right? Yeah. Now cows are the gold standard because their cheese, their milk production is is uh, sure. higher quantity. Yeah, yeah. So um, then you actually have processing things. So fresh cheese really does, it's mild and it's, it could be same day cheese. So like are, they could have just made this. These are from all different places. We got yeah. Switzerland, Italy, Oregon, France. Fredericksburg. Vermont, Fredericksburg. Yeah, this is actually June's Joy. This is like two days old when I bought it. Okay. And it's goat cheese. So some cheese you want really fresh and other cheese you want aged? Yeah, this is goat cheese with salt, honey, thyme, pepper, and uh, enzymes. What do we just put it on like a knife? Yeah, we got knives. Yeah, we got knives. Okay. So get your own little knife there. Sure. Get you some. Come on, get you some. So we're just doing straight cheese. We're just not, doing straight cheeses. Not uh, pairing it. Well, just, we will do some pairings in a second. We want to get the direct flavor first. Yep. So goat cheese, very, very fresh. It's good. Oh. Um, peppery and sweet. You know what saves that for me? 
Hmm. I don't like goat tree cheese normally. Yeah. But this one I really enjoy. It's really nice. And it's because of the honey and peppercorn. Yes, peppery and sweet. Or nice. pepper, I mean. That has honey and peppercorn. That's magnificent. That's the dominant flavor. Dude, I could just kind of guzzle that all day long. So you get obviously that, you know, big creamy um, type of experience, but it's a nice balance of pepper. So what you want in cheese is smell. Honey sweetness. So smell, texture, and taste. The smell isn't as strong as the taste. Yeah, anything you get in there that you think is less than a goat cheese. I'm double dipping. Yeah, I already did that. I don't care. It's already back. It's already just mold. We're basically just eating piles well, of mold. Now it's mold and her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> I'm saying you have to. Hurt. It smells. Uh, it just smells like fresh cream. Yeah. With a little bit of funk to it. I like that a lot. Yeah, me too. I could just really okay. Yeah, just go to really town on that. Going one. back to this. Okay, our next category is what's called soft ripened. Okay. So this is like brie and things like that. This, this is, is the, a the little bit older. This is Champlain Triple Valley Creamery in Vermont, and this is cow. So these are obviously cheeses that are sourced from what are they called? Like what cheeseries or something? What do you call them? <laughs> <laughs> dairies? I don't know. What do you call in the comments? What do you call a place that makes cheese? All cheese right. maker? Now, what he said was you should do this with the jelly. Cheese shop. So we've got a raspberry champagne jelly. Right. This is uh, from California, Glen Ellen, California. Did they make, do they make their own cheeses? Because obviously they're bringing in cheese yeah. from other places. No, all these places, they're, they're made themselves. No, 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 but does... Wow, that was aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Does Antonelli's have a version of cheese that they make? No. Oh, they just buy their own stuff? No, okay. they just buy their own stuff. Okay. Okay, so, get another knife, and what you're gonna do is, we'll put one in there for that. I'm with a fresh knife, I'm gonna Fre yeah. chunk of this, this is mine. Good lord, okay, I want way less than that. Okay, here's mine. Okay. Now, I actually like brie, because it's pretty mild. Do it without it first. I know. So, first things first, getting, smell. Getting prepared. No, no, don't put it on that, I need to wrap this thing back up again. Eat it. You're rooting this. Give me proper plates and utensils. Okay, there's the cow. That actually smells like a barnyard. Like if you've ever been around a cow barnyard or around a stockyard, it smells a lot like that cheese. Still super creamy, but a sharpness. Wow, it's very different. Oh! Very different. Okay, now combine that. Oh man, it smells like a tastes like a barnyard too. This is why I'm not a big cheese guy. Because I grew up around a lot of these things that these cheeses smell like to me. You know, this is. This is actually past lunchtime. We haven't eaten. Mm -hmm. I may just like your wife may not be getting go to much. town on cheese. She may not be getting much cheese. Have you tried it with the? So I'm seeing as I'm the wrong person to give good cheese tasting notes, but I will tell you that this one has a little more kind of earthy, rich, dense tones. Creamy, it, but it's not at, near that, right? Rich, dense, yes. Also. A little bit of that sharpness, the same kind of sharpness you would get from a blue cheese, not as aggressive as a blue cheese. A little tangy. Uh, by the way, you said that's 70 to 75% butter. There's that creaminess. Yeah. yeah. Um, 30 days old. Wait a minute, so it can be called cheese even though most of it isn't cheese, it's just... No, no, that's what butter, it's all the same thing, you're just letting it age. Okay. And it's developed, it's getting uh, mold, bacteria, and like that. I mean, it's all the same source of things. It's not the same thing. It's yeah. all the same sources. Let's go into washed rind. Now, washed rind is when you actually take the cheese wheel and you spray the exterior of it with, or rinse it in something like beer or wine, mm -hmm. and it accelerates the bacteria growth on the outside. Okay. And so you get a little more drama. By the way, the champagne triple cream Ladled into cro croton molds and aged 10 days. Hints of mushroom, they say. Hints of mushroom. I can see that. Man, I don't, what, what kind of mushroom? Mushrooms can be totally different. No, all mushrooms are the same in the whole world. Eh. All right, now we're into timber doodle. I think that's inaccurate, Daniel. No, I'm, I am. A, <laughs> I'm the Daniel Whittington of Daniel Whittingtons. <laughs> all right, uh, this is a combination of cow and sheep milk. Mm -hmm. Timber doodle. You're in charge of uh, cutting cheese while I talk. Nestled in the Green Mountain region of Vermont, Mark and Gary Fisher, or Jerry Fisher, I don't know, combined the ship's milk from their own herd with the cow's milk of a neighbor, you Taylor said, Farm. Now the question is, ships, is- Ships don't have milk. Is, uh, yeah, and the question is, does the neighbor know <laughs> that they're combining the neighbor's milk with their milk? Rectangular washed rind cheese. This tastes like cream and macadamia nuts. It's good on a baguette. 
Do we it. don't have baguettes. What do you think? Very light. I'm gonna stop saying creamy because I'm pretty sure most of these creamy. are gonna be creamy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except the hard cheeses. We've had soft cheeses. This is like the know. halfway point between the funk we just had and the cheddar. And the cheddar? I think it's cheddar. Like it's headed towards a. I think the direction of a sharp taste. Really? But I was gonna say we're so far away from anything sharp. This is mm. soft, rounded off, um, milky, buttery, creamy. Not, yeah. a, not a trace of sharpness. There's something in there that I'm getting. But this is oh, my least is. favorite so far. Least favorite so far. Yeah. All right. Screw you, Timberdoodle. No, I like, um... By the way, you can look these all up. You can, uh, And you can order these, I think, directly from different people. Timberdoodle is Woodcock Farm in Vermont. Okay. It almost reminds me of, like, an egg flavor. Oh, that's why you don't like it? That's why I don't like it. Because you hate eggs. I could totally get that. Yeah. Yes, with the egg yolk. Yeah. Included. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, now we're into, I think, semi-soft, which is things like Colby... You know they have medication for that. And shit like that, yeah. Huh. <laughs> this cheese is, hmm. And this one is... Let me get some more of this. Asao Arati. It's French. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. Traditional semi-soft cheese made from sheep's milk in the Basque region of the Pyrenees Mountains, named after the nearest ge geographical landmarks, mm -hmm. the Asao Valley and Arati Forest, and made by the One Tick or Onatic Cooperative, hundreds of local farmers getting together, aged for at least 90 days, rich, nutty, floral, floral? and orba you herbaceous. Can, you can get How do you get rich, nutty, and floral? I don't know. That's called Deanston. Oh, that's mine. Ooh, that that's is, the one. That is really nice. That's mine. That's my favorite one. Period. It's um so far. Getting getting towards Sharpness. Yeah, yeah, we're headed that direction. It's dipping a toe. That is. Ooh. Oh, that's. To there's me, no funk, and if you don't like stinky cheese, that's going to be your home base. I'm right getting there. almost like a mild cheddar. Yeah, I could. This would be a good cheese for a sandwich. Yeah. Because it wouldn't compete with the sandwich, but it would add a little bit of uh, of the right kind of cheese mm -hmm. character. And it's not. Do you get floral? I don't get floral. I just eat that all day. It's damn good. I think we just stop now. Okay, so we're moving on. To Damn. Glarner Alp case. Good God, I can't pronounce these names. So this is from Switzerland. Glarner Glarner Alp case. Somebody just told me this. Okay, so here's a cool thing about this one. He said they have actually uh, got this cheese specifically for Antonelli's. Okay. They funded them doing a run. Yeah. So here's what they do. Once a year, the family goes up. To six thousand feet above sea level, the Antonelli family or the no cheese no no the cheese making family okay. in the Swiss Alps. Are you noticing how much littler how much? No, less? I'm, I'm better for that. Yeah, I'm better. Um, in the Swiss Alps, they go up to make the cheese at six thousand feet. What? Yes, and they move all the family up into the cabins. There's no internet, what? no cell. They're just all up there making cheese. Yeah, and then they age it. This is ninety days aged, I think. Okay, and then they actually have to, uh, like. Deliver the cheese back down the mountain. <laughs> this, <laughs> like they helicopter it down or something. This like is that. giving our previous favorite a run for its money. I think you're gonna like the previous one more. Mm, I like the previous one more because you like the uh, the more creamy things. Yeah, the lighter things. This Wait. is approaching. This is being sharper, more aggressive. Woo! Sharper, more aggressive. Not stinky though. Not mm -mm. not stinky sharp. It's but really sharp. Right. I'm imagining a tiniest bit of sweetness. Yeah, I get that. And it's interesting to get that sharpness, not pepper and oh, honey. Oh, oh, I got something to try. The first thing we had was like pepper and honey. So of course you're gonna get some pepper notes and sweet notes. This for me is cheese sharpness with some kind of sweet finish. What is this? Sweet and tangy mustard seeds. Oh, nice. He said to try that cheese right. with some sweet and tangy mustard seeds, you'll need the spoon. Here, I got spoons for you. Dink. Damn, dude. <laughs> Are you getting me? That's good stuff, right? That's amazing. <laughs> you can see how people... No, really... you need to try that. You, oh, I did. It, I did at the cheese shop. It completely changes. There you go. If a city doesn't have an Antonelli's, 
Whole, is there like Whole Foods? If you have a Whole Foods, well, is that gonna? They be... tend to have a good selection. Okay. Um, or you know, any local grocery store. These days, grocery stores are getting better and better at having at least one little corner fancy cheese section. No. So oh, yeah. um, it's it's not as uncommon as it used to be. It's not gonna be anywhere near the quality that you're gonna get going to a shop that can fund their own Alpine cheese program. Well, and an interesting, <laughs> a cool thing about cheese as opposed to whiskey is you don't have to invest in like a bottle. Right. You can just get the tiniest little sample to see if you like it. And it's gonna, it absolutely is gonna be one of those things where you can get some basic ideas of flavors that are going on, but you're not gonna know if you like it until you've tried it. So you can get a, get a little uh, little sample in there. Okay, this is Bianco Sardo. Yeah. This is Italian sheep's milk. This is considered a hard cheese. If you know what I mean. Yeah, sheep make See the you, difference? You mean sheep make you, you see, hard. Yeah, you see how it gets harder and harder instead of a, mm -hmm. comparatively, right. the rind, it seems like the rind gets thicker almost. Yeah. I'm doing this right here. No, I'm doing this right yeah, here. I'm going to take a piece off the edge, yeah. Right. Hey, this is what you have this for. a sharp knife right there. Chunk. There you go. Okay, now, take one bite. Yeah, sharp. I really like sharp cheese. Now you do. Mm -hmm. Now here's what you're gonna do, you're gonna try it with honey. But not just any honey. Ooh. Actual honeycomb oh. from South Austin. There's like bee legs and wings in there. Yeah, this is called comb honey. And this lady has a bunch of micro hives all over town. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't put anything in them, she just lets it, it's all natural. Right. And then she goes and collects them and Antonelli sells it. Nice. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Just an actual chunk. We're so fancy. We are so fancy. <laughs> So fancy. Oh, me so fancy. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting worse and worse. Okay, check that out. Me fancy long time. <laughs> Come on. So I've had honeycomb before. That looks like it's much more soft and supple. Try you that. just went right through that with a plastic knife. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I wasn't going to lead you astray. So by itself, it's a little too sharp for it, me. It is. It's it's big, sharp, aggressive. If you like a it really sharp, the honey. sharp cheddar, you'll absolutely love that. Caveman cheese is next. Oh, there's more cheese. This is considered. Oh my God, man. This is a blue. Che We're in the final category. Wait, wait. The final category. Wait. Is you're just gonna straight up eat that, aren't you? No, I'm going for like the consistency. It cuts through like. That's perfect. It's uh yeah. Not butter quite. Almost as soft as butter to cut through this honeycomb thing. This is Rogue Creamery in Oregon. David Grimmels and Carrie Bryant, Central Point, Oregon. They aged this cheese for six months in limestone caves. Dense cow's milk cheese, fruity blue with vanilla. Which one? This one? Yep, fruity blue with vanilla, a buttery texture full of crystals. Here we go. Try it. With crystals. a bite of dark chocolate. With crystals? Yes. What's a crystal? Like flavor crystals. Okay. I don't do blue cheese. I tried this one just to be a good sport in Antonelli's, but it was too funky for me. I man. just got you a little one. All right, I'll do a tiny little bite. All right, and we're supposed Cheers. to- Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> we're supposed to pair it with. What? Whoa! Oh yeah. Whoa! Bam. Where's the vanilla? Oh, so much stank. It's got, ah! the, got the stank on it. It's got ah! the stank on Dude, it. Dude, this is like the spring bank of cheese. I'll tell you what this is. This is cask strength cheese. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it totally is. All right, now try it again, but with that. Also from Portland, Oregon. That pairing didn't do anything for me. Yeah. I like the cheese better than ever. Every other pairing absolutely added something to the experience. It paired really nicely. It complimented but something. But this one's fighting for its life. It enhanced some things, yeah. And as big and loud and as aggressive and as cask strength as that cheese is, <sighs> you pair it with that really dark chocolate, mm -hmm. it gets taken over. Ah! Man. Ha! Woo! Yeah! I got a trash can next to you if you want to toss dirty knives. Well, I'm gonna suck on them. I got one more fin grand finale. Is this the diaper cheese? No, 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 we ate the diaper cheese. We ate that the was, diaper cheese? That was the Tim, uh, that was the Tim, Timber doodle? Timber doodle. Okay, if you say so. We're now gonna do water buffalo cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can milk anything with nipples. Okay, this is considered, yeah, I think this might be, this is semi-soft. Yeah, definitely. Very soft. That's like a brie. That goes back to the 
a previous category. Mm -hmm. All right, here's to water buffaloes, and here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. Uh, if you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you cheese, may, may you, you cheese, cheese with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.